Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. What makes Indian politics so interesting and so fascinating, particularly for us journalists, is the characters it has. All politics is interesting around the world, but I am quite sure that in no other country will you find so many different characters, which is also a function of our diversity. Because India has different states, different, different ethnicities, different religious groups, different castes. So, one of these most fascinating characters is Mayavati. And as we can see, these elections have shown that Mayavati has done quite poorly and she seems to be in decline. So, <clears throat> the essential point I am making is that these elections have confirmed a trend that has now been on for almost 10 years, which is that Mayavati, who had emerged as a pre-eminent political force in the Hindi heartland, especially Uttar Pradesh, has now been in continuous decline. And unless she reboots her politics or she reinvents the way she reaches out to the voters, I think this election will, can mark the end of Mayavati as a political phenomenon. Not just Mayavati, but also her Bahujan Samaj party. Uh, why do we say so? In these elections, she's won just 10 seats. Uh, despite the fact that she had an alliance, a very powerful alliance with Samajwadi party, all data shows you that she won 10 seats, Samajwadi party won sides, 5 seats, that mainly because she was not able to transfer her own Dalit vote bank to Samajwadi party, whereas Samajwadi party still managed to transfer at least some of its Muslim and Yadav vote bank to Mayavati's candidates. This is a real loss of face and loss of strength. So this is a big loss of face and loss of clout for her because Mayavati's big claim to fame, which very few politicians could have in India was that my vote is transferable. Other people's vote is not transferable. What that means is my voters are so loyal that if I tell them vote this way, they will vote that way. But Congress, SP, any of the other parties or BJP does not have the same strength. So why should I even strike alliances? This time see, she struck an alliance, but she failed to deliver on her claim, old claim of transferable vote. So Mayavati minus her transferable vote is a pale shadow of what she was. Because under this or behind this loss of transferable vote is also the story of a great attrition of her vote bank. Because her core vote bank is the Dalits, essentially the Dalits of UP, but then Dalits in other parts of the country as well. At one point, she had 8% of the national vote, uh, which is not small uh, for a new party essentially located in one state. Uh, so that vote has obviously been going. These elections have shown very clearly that while her Jatavs, now UP has about 20% uh, uh, Dalit population among its voters, of that about 40% is Jatav. So Jatavs have stayed firm with her in UP, but the rest of the Dalits have mostly gone away to the BJP. And this has been happening for some time now, which means that instead of being the leader of all of the Dalits in UP, she is now beginning to be seen as the leader of one caste, the Jatavs, just as Mulayam Singh Yadav was initially seen as the leader of just Yadavs until he combined the Muslims with them. Now, if we, we see Mayavati's career, uh, she was born in 1956, so still young by Indian standards, became the chief minister of UP, such a large state at the age of 39 in 1995. Uh, first woman Dalit chief minister of a state in India, uh, 
who was her partner bjp was her ally coalition partner then again in 97 she became chief minister and yet again in 2002 these were short lived uh, chief ministerships these three tenures all three were in coalition with the bjp now that is a blot that has stayed on her as far as the muslim voter is concerned i am not saying partnering with the bjp is a blot but that blot for the muslim voter has remained in fact in 2002 uh, she again was noticed particularly by muslim voters when after the riots in gujarat she went there and campaigned for the bjp which means narendra modi so that led to decline increasingly in her strength because she was confined to one caste and then she made a dramatic turn around in her fortunes that was in 2007 in the state assembly elections she put up a good coalition of castes see she got a lot of the muslims to switch to her and she got some of the brahmins to switch to her and the basically she convinced the muslims that she was in a better position to defeat the bjp than mulayam singh yadav who was the incumbent and a very very unpopular incumbent because mulayam singh yadav ran a very yadav dominated government and up has always suffered from that if mulayam singh came to power then hand pumps will be fixed outside yadav homes or yadav streets if mayawati came to power hand pumps will all go to go in the in, in dalit streets or then increasingly jata streets so it this was a divided electorate she got some together and she won chief ministership again in 2007 this time with a full majority that was the peak of mayawati since then it's been downhill for her in 2009 parliament elections she got a good percentage of votes 27% but she got only 20 seats that was a divided election in up she got 20 congress got 21 sp i think got 23 congress bjp got just about double figures that is the election in which the congress did very well so you can see that some voters muslims some dalits some of congress's traditional voters shifted there and i will tell you the reason i say that because therein lies the story of what started her decline and what has continued her decline so but still she still got 20 seats in 2009 in 2014 how many did she get she got zero seat in 2009 in up a state where she had won a majority of her own 2014 she got zero 2009 she got 20 even though she was in power but 2014 she got zero and that looked like then it looked like she had hit the rock bottom after that state assembly elections up has 400 plus seats how many did she get she got 19 19 for somebody who had won more than 200 seats in up just 8 years earlier she was now down to 19 19 19 seats so you could see that the legend of mayawati and bahujan samaj party bahujan samaj party was now ending she tried to revive it this time through this alliance with akhilesh yadav obviously it did not work uh, she has got 10 seats in parliament so from 0 she goes to 10 she is currently not an mp she goes from 0 to 10 but the fact is she is still a very pale shadow of who she was and she knows better than anybody else although she is blaming akhilesh for not transferring his votes but she knows better than anybody else and she also sees the same exit poll data that we do that it is because her voters have left her she has got some seats because akhilesh has been transferred his vote to her now what has brought her to this pass mayawati did not found her politics her politics was, was founded by a remarkable man called kanshiram kanshiram was a man from punjab from a village near ropar or rupnagar in punjab from a family of veteran soldiers so he always used to tell us that eight of his ancestors fought in the first world war two in the second world war and even in operation blue star among the special forces commandos who got killed two were his cousins so he drew his 
fam he drew his upbringing from a soldierly family he did not join the army but he became a defense scientist so he went to erdl in pune which is the explosives research and development lab of drdo and was working on his phd on explosives when he got involved in dalit caste issues he read about ambedkar became an activist first on the employees front unions and then built this political party in 1984 that's around time that he found mayawati delivering a speech somewhere uh, and he was very impressed with her he found that mayawati was preparing for her ias exam he said don't waste your time becoming an ias officer i'll make you some, somebody who will have ias officers sitting in front of her waiting for instructions so he talent hunted her and he mentored her now i had the good fortune of seeing kashiram early in his development 1988 that is when vp singh left the congress party rajiv's congress party resigned from parliament and contested the by election in allahabad sunil shastri from the congress lal bahadur shastri's son and vp singh against the congress suddenly a new candidate appeared there a third candidate called kanshiram now everybody knew kanshiram was not going to win but initially people thought he was just a non serious candidate but as his campaign picked up people realized that he was a serious candidate he wasn't going to win but he was going to get enough votes to maybe influence the fortunes of other of others and he had demonstrated that he was building a really credible political force so what was his big slogan vote hamara raj tumhara nahi chalega nahi chalega what does that mean what that means is we dalits are 20% muslims are 18% or 20% obcs are this much percent christians are this much percent sikhs are this much percent so and he was very direct in fact i could even say crude in his approach he would say aap sab log 40 saal se gulam rahe ho for 40 years you've been slaves to the brahmins and the thakurs you are the majority throw away this yoke and he would say i want peaceful change ballot se hona hai to hone do bullet chahiye to bullet bhi chala denge and he would say there is no problem with riots if they want riots there will be riots because if there are riots who will die and who will survive in a village somebody whose clan or whose caste has a 100 houses or who has two houses so he made this a, made it a very strong anti brahmanical anti thakur anti upper caste and anti majority anti uh, majoritarian so he tried to bring everyone together and the, his dream was that all of india's bahujans which means people in actual majority if you can bring them all together he even held public rallies with kashmiri separatists with subhash ghising in uh, gorkha land darjeeling with uh, assamese with everybody to say all of us are part of this bahujan community and the dream being that all of them will be put together and led by a dalit who will become prime minister of india that's why his second slogan mang raha hai hindustan lal qile par neela nishan so that was a big vision and he made by mayawati the center point of his big vision in 2001 15 january he announced that by mayawati was going to be his successor now as luck would have it 2004 he had a stroke he never quite recovered from it he died 3 years later in fact i recorded my last interview and the only interview with mayawati in that period in 2005 in his in her house a two part walk the talk you can find it on ndtv's website uh, when kanshiram was sick in that home by that time mayawati was in charge and as we saw later 2 years later she had won power in up now there can be many analysis and views on why she has come to this stage and why she is going downhill i will quickly list a couple i think the key problem is her ambition got ahead of her now you it's perfectly fine for a politician to want to become prime minister but if a politician starts thinking that i am entitled to be prime minister then you start making mistakes so when did she make the first big mistake she made her first big mistake when the going was good for her 2007 she was a chief minister of up with her own majority a rare thing to happen in up for a local party that is the time that she walked into the trap 
in which she was attracted by people completely in an unprincipled way who collected to bring down Manmohan Singh's UPA government on the question of the nuclear deal. So, Prakash Karath put this group together. I don't think that uh, Harkrishan Singh Surjit would have done it. And they then projected Mayavati as their combined candidate, even going into the elections of 2009. That's the election that the Congress won quite handsomely, or UPA won quite handsomely. And Mayavati suffered a loss of face and prestige. And to suffer that setback while she was, was the Chief Minister of UP, that set her downhill, that started affecting her power and ability to carry out her decisions in UP itself. So, she had left her turf, she had become too ambitious, she made a wrong political call, that completely, mortally group was never going to defeat the UPA. So, but ambition, as I said, got the ahead of her. Even this time, now this alliance with Samajwadi party was an interesting alliance because the idea was to defeat the BJP for them and to get as many seats as possible in UP. But midway through the campaign, talk started Mayavati as Prime Minister. She didn't discourage it. In fact, uh, a couple of days before the results, leaks were coming from her camp that in case it's a broken result, there's a hung parliament, she will go with anybody who makes her Prime Minister. Now, that creates many problems for her. One, it further consolidates the upper castes against her. And she forgets then that in 2007, she came to power because Brahmins and also some Thakurs voted for her. Nothing of the sort happened this time. So she's now got isolated. And even among the Dalits, she's got isolated as a Jatav leader. So she's no longer now a Dalit leader. She's only a Jatav leader. And Jatav are more Jatavs are more empowered among the Dalits. And because they've had power through Mayavati, they've become even more powerful. So that is the new elite among the Dalits. So she's now become the leader of a caste from the leader of a caste group, which could then attract others. That is the mess in which she finds herself. There are other issues with her. She's very dictatorial. And like Kashiram was not uh, Mr. Guri Two Shoes, but Kashiram was very political. She always, he always engaged. Uh, Mayavati has not been engaging, doesn't give interviews, doesn't do press conferences, reads from written statements. And her demeanor is that of a very uh, distant dictator. That doesn't work in today's politics. So she has to change it because underlying all this is the central message. The central message is if your politics stagnates, then you decline and die as a political force. So for politics, for you to sustain and grow as a political force, you have to keep reinventing your politics and you have to keep, keep reinventing and strengthening your ideological appeal and also broad basing your appeal instead of making it narrower. So she's not done any of that, made big mistakes. That's why unless she does something radical now, one lasting impact of this election will be the end of the phenomenon of Mayavati and Bahujan Samaj Party because a lot of the Dalit vote is now shifting to the BJP. In some ways, the BJP is now becoming what Congress used to be in the past. Congress had up the upper caste vote bank and it was a magnet then for Dalits, Muslims, tribals. Muslims are not going to BJP yet. But today, if BJP gets the Dalits, then the way the change in India's politics in 1989 when Congress lost, it lost its Dalit and Muslim vote banks will be at least partly reversed now and that will be the end of her politics because remember the first time she, she won elections and became an MP was in 1989, just two years after Kashi Ram's, just a year after Kashi Ram's 1988 election. So that's my brief look and sort of uh, diagnostic formulation on the political prospects of a great character of our politics called Mayavati or Behenji as she is popularly known. And remember, if you liked it and if you like the stuff we put out on our YouTube channel, so please do subscribe and please do ask your friends and family to subscribe and also share our links uh, on whatever network you use, including WhatsApp. <laughs>